Now we're going to move to the upper part of the planking and uh, install the shear streak, which is just above the, the gun port, um, and it's what the gun port lids are secured to. And the first decision we have to make is do we leave the timber heads in place? Um, because on the rail ship, obviously, they would have been left in place and shaped institute. Um, on a model, they could become a real pain in the butt. Um, for now, I'm going to try and install the pieces and clean up with them in place. But if they do become a problem, um, I'm going to cut them off. Today, we're going to install the shear streak. And I just thought I'd take you through the preparation and then what I did. The first thing you'll notice is that the streak fits right off the bottom of the bollard timber here. And it's three inches in, in thickness. Um, so you need to make sure that you again have at least three inches right up against the frame and the bollard timber. And to make sure you get a perfect fit, what I do is I've fitted this little block um, tight up against the base so that when I go to fit this, I'll push it down hard and know that I'll get it exactly at the base of the protrusion that comes out on the bollard timber um, and that it'll fit in the right spot. And then to get an understanding, I made up this um, piece um, which is incorrect, um, but it's just to get give me a feel for how the, the piece is laid out. And I clamp that in place. So you're pushing it into the bollard timber and down. And then we pull it in place and we bend it and we get to see how it'll fit. And again, we're looking for a nice smooth line. And then it's gonna come down to the gun port here and a very slight amount here. Um, so again, you'll just make this slightly over, oversized at this point. And then it tapers um, from the edge, the bottom of the gun port, back to an, it's, the measurement is not given. You can just look at it by eye or take it off the plan. So once I had that figure out, I then take a measurement. So I know the maximum width of the plank, which is from the top of the plank to include going down to the top of the gun port window and then cut that out and that's what we have here. So we've cut this piece out, everything is big, but it's cut this eight inch thick streak so that it'll fit here and we're just checking it and it's roughly correct. So now we're gonna bend it into place. Again, we're using a clamp that's going to hold this without movement at all. Those of you who know my uh, method of, of bending planks, um, we're going to leave that to let it settle down, cool off. It's hard to touch. Hit it a few more times for about 10, 15 seconds each time. And eventually it'll hold that exact shape. Of course, this is our second um, blank. And to set it, what we make sure is that the port side and the starboard side are exactly the same. And then we draw a line and then we line up this join here. It's a very critical join. And I got back and forward until I got that perfectly aligned. And now we can refine the adjustments to the gun ports. This is the final fit. So we have some to take off here, some to take off here. So we just need to clean the lines up, ignore the the gun ports, just clean this line up so we have a nice clean line, a clean line here, and we're ready to stick.
we've lined up the bottom of the strick with the bottom of the of the gun port um, sill um, so that they're absolutely flat with one another. The top doesn't really matter. We did the scarf joint um, off the model to make this a single piece and we're doing the same thing with this piece here. Um, we're going to put a false join in it because we want a really nice clean line going across here and I don't want to take the chance of having a join and having that little dip that sometimes we get uh, when we join two pieces on a really critical bend. Now I want a nice tight line on the gun port tops and as was done on the other side we've extended the straight down because remember the hinges have to be attached the gun port hinges have to be attached as we go up and to attach the hinges properly you need proper support um, and to do that I need to pin them in now so that I can really clean up the bottom of the joint here which is very difficult to get at without sanding from the outside and to do that I need to pin this in place because it will move so we've laid out the holes and we're actually going to drill them and we're going to use the turbo carver to set the exact place on the on the plank and um, and then we'll drill the piece That's now complete. I had added the extended piece that you see here um, over these two gun port windows and realized that was an error. So I cut them off and cleaned it up. So that was, that was an easy fix. Now we move to the bow of the boat, number 30 and 31. And as you can see, <laughs> I've made quite a few pieces. Um, this was the first piece and that turned out to be a bit of an error and this is the second piece and there's a little just to clip this in here this fits down here there's a little recess at the end and it took me a little while to figure out the easiest way to do this was to simply go on the table saw and cut this piece out and then just clean up the edge. So I'll have to remake that. So it'll be one more attempt to, to do this correctly. While I wait on that piece to dry, I've made the final piece and that'll fit on the piece here. I've just um, actually pulled the video from YouTube um, to correct again which is a clear error. These two curves where I have the curve coming all the way around in the old book that I have which is in the binder this is what it shows. In the new book it, it comes straight down and is flat. So I'm going to reshape these um, so that they are flat. In the new edition um, the covering board 
which fits on the top of these streaks, um, that's what has the fancy curl um, and it's not the streak itself. So the streak is flat with a curved top and the same thing on the side. So I'm just going to correct that and modify the video so I don't mislead anybody. Now it's time to put the last piece on. Um, so we've taken the measurement on both sides um, to make sure that it's absolutely spot on. And of course we're bending it in shape. Um, we've hit this a few times, three times, at about 10 seconds each. When we take the clamps off, it should hold its shape pretty good. So the key now is to mark the slot that we have to cut here and we have this preset already so we're setting it long and then we'll fit it and adjust it coming back leaving the front in place Now we're going to tackle the stern of the boat and I'm going to follow the same principle I followed in the bow. Um, you'll also notice I've cleaned up the tops. I've still left the top timbers or timber heads protruding. Um, that made me go back and reference 330, um, which talked about um, if I felt like it, we could cut the timber heads off and simply pin them on afterwards. But now I'm going to leave them in place. Um, but it also made me go back and look at the plan because I'd forgotten. The plan reference is ZAZ4691, which is the one plan I have. What's interesting from the HMS Thorn point of view is the t timber head tops um, are shown in the book as being one foot three inches um, but later on there's a note with a date on it which shows these were increased to one foot five inches and that date predates the launch of the thorn so in the case of the thorn this is the first instruction i'm getting where the timber head was taller than what is indicated in the book and again when the time comes to make that decision these timber heads will be at one foot five inches. Keeping all the information correct, the plank at this stage is 10 inches and then it drops down here to eight inches. So that's reflected in the cut and we'll do this on the table saw and then clean up. Here's one of these constant challenges and um, where the join is and um, we tend to get a little space between there so to help mitigate that we're just going to heat it down. Of course another way you can resolve that is by putting cardstock on it and cutting the curve in with such a slight curve that this is really the simplest way to do it.
This brings this exercise to the end. All that's left now to do is the streaks that will seal the gun ports. Um, and then we are complete then we've completed the um, the planking. You will have noticed my little hat that I've put on the back to protect the frames. Now if I hit the back accidentally, um, I hit all four and not one of them. So hopefully they'll last until I get to the back. I know David won't be too happy to see me sanding with a power sander on the side of the model. Uh, but I am using Greg's little technique of putting the blue tape on the areas I don't want to risk um, sanding. So if I do touch it, I cut the paper and not the model. So we'll see you as we uh, approach the final set of external planks. And don't forget, keep modeling.